All right, when we're solving a uh, inequality problem that's not linear, one of the things we never want to do is try to work with the actual inequality expression uh, when solving because if we start trying to take like um, logs on both sides, we don't know how that is actually supposed to behave across an inequality in general um, without really kind of taking um, very special cases as you do the problems. And so anytime you're solving an algebraic inequality, uh, there are some different processes that we can take. We can take more of a graphical approach, or we can take more of an analysis approach. So I'm going to take a look at more of a, uh, an analytic approach. And so our first step is that we're going to uh, solve the equality problem. And so when I say we're going to solve the equality problem, if I can spell, is that I'm going to just ignore that, that we have a greater than sign and say, let's just look at e to the 2 minus 3x equal to 3. And so solving this, we just use our um, properties of the natural log to take natural logs of both sides, and that will be able to pull down this exponent, since this exponent is really what's uh, tricking us up. So we're going to take the natural log of e to the uh, 2 minus 3x. And then we're also going to take the natural log of 3. So if I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other. And the key here is that this 2 minus 3x, we're going to be able to pull out of the exponent from our log properties. So I have 2 minus 3x times the natural log of e equals the natural log of 3. Well, natural log of e is just 1, and so we have 2 minus 3x times 1, which is just going to be the 2 minus 3x. Now to isolate x by itself, I can uh, subtract 2 from both sides. And then um, I can get rid of the negative first and then divide through by 3. If I do that, multiplying by negative will make that a positive 2 and a negative natural log of 3. So I'd have 2 minus the natural log of 3. And like I said, it can also divide through by 3. I'm just going to do that in one step. So now we have a solution to the equality. So our second step is to examine the domain of any of the functions in the terms of our inequality equation. And since we're dealing with an exponential function and a linear inside, we know the domain is negative infinity to infinity. So I don't have to restrict anything on a number line to say I only can only look in this region. I can look at all the real numbers for my possible solution. So now step three, we're going to identify equality points. And based on those points, we know the inequality is false because I want it to be strictly greater than 3. Well, when x equals to this expression, I know it's um, equal to 3 on the left-hand side. So it can't be part of my solution. So I'm going to do a number line and say, okay, look, at this point, 2 minus natural log of 3 over 3, I know it is not a solution. So let me pick a, a color that will be visible here. Nice orange. So this point here is not a solution, but I don't know anything about the rest. Um, the nice thing about this function, because there are no other breaks and we know it's a, a, a nice continuous function, the only place it's going to change greater than 3 is going to be around this point where it equal to 3. And so the rest of the analysis is saying, okay, I need to figure out what's happening on this side and what's happening on this side. Is it always bigger than 3 or is it always less than 3? If I had a break in a domain, I would want to label those points too as that's another place that I could switch that inequality around as far as this being greater than or smaller than 3. So I'm going to pick a point over here and i got to figure out you know, what is a number to the left of this guy. So 2 minus natural log of 3 over 3 if I look at what the natural log of 3 is, this is e to what power gives me 3, I know that answer is going to be a little bit less than 
I'm sorry, a little bit greater than 1, but it's going to be less than 2. So on the numerator, I've got a positive over 3. So this is a positive number, and it's probably going to be, um, oh, actually I'm not sure how much, um, how close it is going to be to 1, but I know if I pick x equal to 0, this is definitely not 0. So what I'm using here is kind of a test point. And I say, okay, what happens at x equals 0 for the inequality? I'd have e to the 2 minus 3x greater than 3. But I'm going to substitute 0 in for x and try to determine if this inequality is true or false. So I have e squared is, uh, since this is 2 minus 0, is that greater than 3? Well, we should know that answer is true, and you can check on your calculator that if you take e and you square it, you're going to get a number greater than 3. So what we find out is all these numbers on the number line are going to be part of my solution set. I don't know what's going to happen over here yet, so I'm going to evaluate it and see what happens. So you can figure out what 2 minus natural log of 3 over 3 is approximately equal to. And so I'm going to do that. I don't need a, a very accurate answer, but I know it's going to be roughly um, 0.3 from the calculator. And so I need to pick a, a value for x to the right. I'm going to use something relatively simple. Let's just pick something like um, x equal to 1. So now I need to test a value at x equal to 1. So at x equal to 1, what does my inequality tell me? So I have e to the 2 minus 3 times 1. Is that bigger than 3? So is that true or false? So I simplify. I have e to the negative 1. Is that bigger than 3? And we should know that this is going to be false if I put e to the negative 1 in the calculator we're going to get um, roughly 0.37 which again we said was false and so that really tells me when I go back to that number line anything to the right of this number here is going to give me a false statement for that inequality problem so what is my solution to this inequality so again, our problem was e to the 2 minus 3x is bigger than 3. Our solution is read from this analysis part. So notice we didn't just take natural logs across inequality and try to solve. There's no guarantee that those methods are going to work unless we know some uh, very specific information. And in general, this type of strategy will kind of pay off if you know the method. So our solution is, well, we can be any real number until we reach this point. So we're starting at n from the extreme left-hand side, so, we, so as we go to uh, negative infinity, until we reach 2 minus natural log of 3 over 3. So hopefully this uh, made a little bit of sense any type of inequality problem you should not be uh, trying to solve algebraically around an inequality. You start off with an inequality and then you go through a process to figure out um, what intervals does it look like our solution set is going to be after you identify any type of uh, restrictions in the domain and any of the points for which the uh, equation that you formed had a solution. Now if that was a, a greater than or equal to sign we would include the point and our solution would have had a closed bracket on the end. But since we had a strictly greater than sign, we use this open bracket so we can approach this number but not equal to it.